Another night of revival. We started out on last Sunday, and here we are on Friday night here at the Magazine Street Seventh Adventist Church, located here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we have been in revival mode all week. Spring Revival 2021. Our theme has been it's time to suit up, putting on the whole armor of God. We have been coming each night from the passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, where Paul admonishes us to put on the whole armor of God because we are in a battle, a spiritual battle. And we make sure that we've got to have on the whole armor of God. And so we're happy that you're here tonight. You have tuned into this broadcast, to this ministry tonight. Oh, I just know I got a sneaky suspicion that God is going to bless us tonight. He has been with us every night of the revival. I'm getting calls and comments and text messages from people stating how much they have been blessed and we're getting new numbers, our numbers are growing. That means you're telling somebody about what's going on here at Magazine Street, Seventh Adventist Church. Oh, even though we're not in the building physically, but we are together in the spirit. And as I said on the other night, even though it, you can't see it, this place is packed because angels are all camped around us. And I feel the angels with us tonight. And so we're glad you chose a good place to be tonight, especially on a Friday night, to be in revival. Oh, I, I just know God is gonna bless your family wherever you are, in your den, in your kitchen, in your dining room, whether you're out on the porch or maybe you, you just, um, just um, gather around with some friends. Tell somebody, revival is going on tonight at the Magazine Street, Seventh Adventist Church, located here in Louisville, Kentucky. I serve as the pastor, Dr. George E. Thornton Sr., and I'm just so glad that you, are, you have been with us all week. I want to thank our prayer warriors. They have been praying around the clock. Because you know the devil is mad. He doesn't want this to go off smoothly. And he will do everything because he seeks to kill, destroy, and disrupt. But ah, great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I thank God for this revival. I thank God for my two compadres who've been with me every night. Our technician, Brother Isaac Khan, making sure that the sound and everything is running smoothly. He's He's also responsible for the graphics that you see up on the screen each night. And then we got the maestro at the piano, James Jimmy Ford Jr. He got religion in his fingers. And we just thank God for him being with us. This has been a wonderful week. All three of us have been joined at the hip. And so we just thank you all for being with us tonight. As I've indicated on other nights, you cannot have a revival without prayer. And each night, if you've been carefully noticing, we have been praying for specific groups. We started out with the general family. Then we prayed last night for husband and wives for marriages. Because we know that the devil tries to attack marriages, Christian marriages. So we prayed for, and then on Wednesday night, we prayed for the children. The devil is trying to steal our babies. 
our boys and girls and young people, and we pray for them, all of the children in Louisville, Kentucky, all those that have gone back to school. We're not just having a revival for the Magazine Street Church. Oh, I've got a greater congregation. I have the, the city of Louisville. I have the West End community. You are my congregation. Hallelujah. And so I thank God that I'm able to share and pray for you. And some of you have responded, thank you, preacher, for the prayers for my family. Well, tonight, it's intentional. Tonight, we're going to pray for our young adults, our young people. And that's by design tonight, because it's Friday night. And let's be honest, Friday night, the devil seems to get into our young people on the weekends. I, I, look, I ain't been in the church all my life. I know back in the day, I did my, I did my stuff on the weekends, on Friday, Saturday, and, and Sunday, try to get it together. But the devil has a way of dealing with our young people on the weekend. My wife and I, we got three beautiful children. And whenever they, the weekend comes, my wife and I, we act up our prayers on their behalf because we don't want them to get into anything or no, for, no harm will come to them that would keep them from being all that God would have them to be. So I know what Friday night is like. Friday, Saturday night. And in fact, even in our city and other cities around this country, most of the killings occur on Friday night. So it's not, it's not by accident that I have chosen Friday night to pray for our young adults, pray for our, our young people in these evil days. That's why the Bible says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days draw nigh. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when they are old, they, 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 they will not depart from it. And so tonight, I'm asking that we pray for our young people. Not that they're getting into any, into any mischief, but like Job did with his children, just in case, we want to offer prayer that God will cover our young people. So won't you bow your heads with me tonight? Because you can't have revival without prayer. Oh God, our Father, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, we lift thine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. For we recognize more than ever before that our help cometh from thee. Tonight, Lord, we come specifically at your throne of grace to intercede on behalf of every young person, our children, our young people, our young adults. It's the weekend. It's Friday night. And we know that the devil will try to disrupt them and, and cause them to get into all kinds of things. But, oh, God, we ask that you block it right now that you bind the devil from them, that you cover our young adults, you cover our young people, because they are young, gifted, and black, and, and you have great potential for them, great purpose for them, and the devil would like nothing but to destroy them and to keep them from their God-given, ordained purpose. Oh God, we ask that you cover them on their, if they're out on the corner tonight, if they're hanging out, where they're not supposed to be tonight, Lord God. May, may you blow on them tonight. Your ruah, your spirit, may you blow on them tonight and they will feel uncomfortable. And they will say like the proud of the son, I will arise <laughs> and go home to my father. Be with them tonight, oh God. Not only just our young men, but our young ladies as well. Be with them, oh God. Build a hedge about them as you did Job's children. Build a hedge about them tonight, Saturday night, and Sunday. Build a hedge about them. This, this prayer is for them tonight. May your home feel this prayer tonight. 
And then even from those of our children who have gone astray from the edicts of what their parents have taught them. May you woo them tonight. May you woo them. May, may, you, may you disrupt their thinking tonight to bring them back to what they were taught. Oh, we live in a time where our children don't believe what we believe. Oh God, the devil is a liar. He cannot have our babies. He cannot have our children. So we pray for all of our young adults tonight. We pray for their relationships. We pray for married couples last night, but tonight we pray for young people that even if they're dating, may they hook up with the right person. Because light and darkness cannot abide in the same room. So God, we pray that if there's their desire to get married and, and look for a life partner, may you lead you to someone who knows the Lord and has a character worthy of them, be it male or female. God, so many of our young adults are troubled on every side. They are confused. They got so many vices coming at them right at the fingertip in this technology. They got smartphones, but, but somehow the devil has dumbed them down. So, Lord God, we pray for them tonight. In Louisville, yes, but all over this country and people who are listening to this broadcast across the globe. We pray for our young people, our young people. They are treasure. And so God, cover them. Our prayers can go where we cannot go. So we solicit prayers on their behalf. And as I ate, indicated the other night that, that before Jesus concludes his meditorial work, the last thing he will do, according to the book of Daniel, he will answer the prayers of mothers. Before he takes off his priestly robe and put on his kingly robe and come back and claim his children, he's going to answer all the prayers of the mothers on behalf of their children before the doors of probation close. So, Father, we stretch out our hands to thee. No other help we know if thou would withdraw thyself from our children, whether shall they go? So bless us and keep us tonight. For we ask it all in the worthy name of Jesus. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. And amen. There, there is something about the power of prayer. But well, we're happy tonight that we have two guests with us tonight both believers of the gospel. Brother and Sister Myers will come, Sister Myers will come first and sing for us. And we know God is going to bless us because he's blessed us all week. And I'm just sitting here looking at both of them. They look like they can sing. So I'm just praying that God would use them tonight. Sister Myers, come on up and introduce yourself and then let the Lord lose you as you lift us up in song tonight before we open up the word. Let the church say amen.
why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. Because, because, because the Lord is my shepherd. the meadows grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream he restores my failing and he helps me to do what honors him the most why I'm safe That's why I'm safe That's why I'm safe I'm safe In His Hide me. 
But goody, that's a classic. That's an oldie but goody. I'm saved in his arms. I'm saved and safe in his arms. Thank you, Sister Maya, for allowing the Lord to use you to usher us into the Word of God tonight. Well, brothers and sisters, we are down to the one more day to go. As I indicated, the revival will end regarding the preaching, but revival goes on and then transforms itself into reformation, uh, a restoration and transformation. That's what revival should be, because you are to move from one pawn to the next pawn. And so we hope that this, this week has been a blessing to you and that you will grow strong in the Lord because of this revival and God using us as instruments of his peace. Well, tonight, we come back again to the book of Ephesians. We, we've been using the word of God, whatever instrument, whatever tablet, you have a phone, whatever you use to, to uh, follow along tonight, we just ask that it be the word of God. Uh, we, you know, that's all we're asking. You know, whatever translation, last night I read it from the clear word. Tonight I'm going back to the King James because I'm a King James man. And so we'll read it from the King James tonight. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. And we have been dealing exclusively, exclusively with verses 10 through 18. We have not delved from this passage of scripture. We have been dealing with Paul. In admonishing us, encouraging us to put on the whole arm of God. Our theme it's time to suit up. We know people like to take clothes off in the spring and summer. Not for the Christian. We need to suit up and put on the whole arm of God. And so if you have your Bibles or whatever device you're using, follow with me as I read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. My, and my Bible reads thusly. Finally, my brethren and my sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole, the whole, not half, not a piece, the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, 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 therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We spoke on that last night. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein with ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. I want to scroll back up to verse 16 where we're going to park at tonight as we continue to deal with the components of the armor of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts, plural, of the wicked. I have I've entitled the message tonight under the tutelage of the Holy Ghost, hashtag this text tonight, with the subject title, I Got Your Back. I Got Your Back. If you're in your home, in your living room, wherever, if you're with someone and you care greatly about them, say to them, I got your back. I got your back. That's our title for tonight's message. Let us bow our heads as we recognize that it is not by might, nor by power, but indeed by the Spirit of the living God. Father God, send your anointing that this preaching might be made easy. And we'll be careful as best we know how to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. I cannot do this if you do not stand up inside me. And as we've said night after night, all we ask, we give you the glory, and you just give us the blessing. And then we'll be careful as best we know how to give all credit to you because you're God all by yourself. Bless the hearers tonight. Let no distraction in technology, let nothing distract this word tonight because this word is critical tonight. Let it go forth. You said your word will not come back void, Lord, and so we're, we're claiming that tonight. So bless your preacher one more time. This vessel of clay, bless me, O oh God, and I'll be careful to recognize who you are. In the worthy name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Tonight, as we have ushered in our theme song, This Means War, we've used it all during the week by Charles Jenkins. This means war. We are in a battle. And I want to put you on full alert tonight that somebody is shooting at you and trying to take you and me out. There is a battle for the soul of our generation. The fiery, flaming darts of the wicked are coming hard and fast at us. And this is where the battle intensifies. This is where the heat of the battle, the rages, the attack, the assault of this invisible enemy. Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. If we could see him, that would be one thing, but this invisible enemy, we can't see him, but his fingerprints are all over the world. We can't see him, none other than Satan himself. This clash between the kingdoms of darkness and light do not usually happen in our churches. They happen in our lives. They happen in our workplaces. They happen in our neighborhoods where our children go to school. They happen in our voting booths, in the halls of influence. And you would think that our church would be a place of equipping and coordinating, and coordinating people, taking them ready for this battle. But, but even sometimes in the church, the battle rages. What that says to me, brothers and sisters, it says to me that the devil, there's no place off limits for the devil. 
The devil's schemes and snares are designed to get us to doubt and question our faith and our belief in God. You, you remember when, 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 G, when the devil tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness? He, he took him up into a holy city and set him up on a high pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, no, he tried to get Jesus to doubt his purpose. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 5. See, the whole scheme of the devil is to try to get us to doubt who God is and try to get us to question our faith. And so now you'll see, as we have been talking about, we, the other night we talked about putting on the girdle of truth, making sure it's fast tightly around you because all of the other equipment hang, hang on that girdle of truth. And we said you've got to know truth and truth is the word of God. Jesus says I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this whole great controversy is about truth versus error and falsehood. So you've got to know what you're standing on. And then he goes on to say then we must put on the breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate covers the upper torso of our body and covers the very serious, delicate, vital organs of our, of our body, which is the heart. The message which is entitled uh, uh, The Matters of the Heart. You can't share your heart with everybody. Because the devil tries to shoot right at our heart. The seat of our emotions. The seat of all of our thinking and all, all of our feeling comes from the heart. The Bible says, out of the heart, the issues of life flows from. And so we've got to guard, protect our heart with the righteousness of Jesus. Because, see, all of my righteousness, all of your righteousness, nothing but filthy rag. But when I put on that breastplate of Jesus' righteousness, I'm armed and dangerous. Or oh, I'm going to kill a devil up in here tonight. And so you got to make sure you have a breastplate. And then it goes on, not only with the girdle of truth, not only with the breastplate of righteousness, but then it says you got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We talked about that last night. See, here's the, here's the dichotomy of this whole thing. And as a Christian, we are peacemakers, but we're also warriors. We are peacemakers when it comes to each other, but we always war against the devil. You don't ever make an agreement with the devil. You should always be at war with him. But when we got our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, we are, we are carrying the tidings of the good news. Great peace have they, and nothing shall what? Offend them. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. But they shall be called the children of God. But then we come to this language now. Notice the shift. No, 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 the language changes. Paul now says, he says, above all. He says, above all, above all, above all, above all. In other words, Paul is trying to alert us that this war is about to intensify. He's trying to get us to understand that, that our faith is now going to be tested and tried. At every point, at every level, our faith will be tried and tested. And so Paul says, above all, look what it says. He says in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See the devil, those, those darts that would come at the soldier, they were fireproof and uh, it was um, the shield was fireproof and arrowproof in order to stop the quenches, the fiery darts of the enemy. See, see, God Paul, remember now, Paul is in prison. And while he's in prison, he's also looking at that Roman soldier. He's familiar 
with, with the military, and he's looking at that Roman soldier, and he's looking at all of his, um, his armament, all of his artifacts. He's looking at all of those things, and Paul is liking those things to us spiritually, that we are in a battle. He looked at the shield, and that shield was to cover and protect us from the, protect them from the fiery dot. Them darts would, darts would come, uh, um, and they, they, they call fiery poison tip arrows. They were like scorpions because they, they were painful and they deadly effect. So as you consider the armor of the Roman soldier, which we have been talking about, the belt, pre, the belt, the breastplate, the shoes, the shield, and we're talking about the knife, all of the things, but I noticed something in this armament. Now watch me now, watch where I'm going with this. Paul says, watch me now, Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. Hmm. But you will know you have something for the belt, you have something for the head, you have something for the chest, you have something for the shoes, but there's nothing for the back. Come on, somebody. There's nothing for the back. When you look at all the pieces, everything seems to be covered except the back. Where is the armor for the back? Where is the armor for the back? There is nothing there. But then again, as you look at those Roman soldiers, if you look at them and how they were disciplined and how they lined up deep, close proximity to each other. And, and, and what I found out, the Roman soldiers were trained to stand firm against the enemy and to cover each other's back. <laughs> They were this trained to cover each other. Come up here, Jimmy. Come up here, Jimmy. They were trained. They were trained to cover each other's back. Jimmy, you hold this here. Okay. They were trained. Now, now, Jimmy. Back, back, yeah. See, now the shield was big. They, they were four feet. I mean, wide and long. And, and see, now Jimmy's shield is long too. But they, yeah. just imagine, they had, they covered each other back. They, they were high behind the shield. And by hiding behind the shield, hold your shield up. Okay. Yeah, they were covering each other back. And even to the point they would cover their heads. Okay. Okay. Because they recognized even when they would fight, they would turn around. They still would cover each other. That's right. And so you think that there's nothing to cover them. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh -huh. You think there's nothing to cover them. But what they learned is they, they had to cover each other's back. Uh, they were trained to protect each other, to protect one another, to cover each other back. Now, shouldn't the church be that way? Shouldn't the church be that way? They would hide behind the shield, protecting themselves and each other from the flaming, fiery darts of the enemy. They would disappear behind the shield from the attack of the enemy. They covered each other's back. And when I looked at some of the illustrations they were deep in numbers. And they were in close proximity, so their back was covered by the other person. Oh, somebody should have shot right there. What they were simply saying, here's what they're saying. I, I'm not gonna be long with this message tonight. Here's what they were saying. I got your back, and you got my back. I got your back, and you got my back. I'm supposed to have your back, and you're supposed to have my back. Oh, help us go to learn how to cover each other's back. Because there, there is no way a person can stand alone in this war. There is no way that a person can stand alone and can be attacked and be defeated in this war by themselves. Two hands are better than one. We are part, I'm getting excited up here. We are part of an army and they are strength in numbers. So they were taught to cover each other's back. They were trained that your life is just as important as mine's. 
And my life is just as important as yours. Oh, I wish the church of the living God could catch that. The shield will also, watch this now, the shield was also covered in oil, treated leather that would smother out any fiery arrows or darts before the damage was done. Now you know where I'm going. The Holy Ghost is represented as oil for us. See, when we call on the Holy Ghost, when we got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit in our lives, he guides us into all truths. He protects us. He keeps us from the, the fiery darts are going to come. They're going to come. It's not a question whether they will come. They're going to come. But you got to make sure you have on the whole arm of God that you may be protected. That you may, note the text said, that you may be able to withstand the fiery dart. Oh, they're going to come. They're going to shoot at you. But if you got on the shield of faith and your back is being covered, hey! You, you will be covered. You will be covered. Because no one, Jimmy, can fight this battle alone. I remember all three dog nights you had that song. One is a lonely number. No one can fight this battle alone. We need each other. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. The arm of God and our divine weapons are only effective as long as we engage the enemy head on. Withdrawing from the field of battle and giving the devil an easy out. We can't retreat. They didn't back up. They stayed close to each other with that shield. That shield, that's why Paul said, above all, that shield was vitally important. We must remember the guarantee given to the pastors. We must put on the full arm of God. And we will be able, that's a promise, we will be able to stand. I don't care what the devil shoots at you. I don't care how he attacks. That's why we sing that song. This means war. No matter the attacks, you can't have my family. You can't have my children. You can't have my finances. You can't have my family. You can't, you can't, you can't. This means, oh! This means war. Woo. This means war. And we've got to make sure that we keep on every piece of the armament. Because the devil ain't playing. You can tiptoe through these tulips if you want. The devil is not playing. The arm of God, the arm of God is vitally important, that shield. But even the shield of covering the back of each other. Watch this now. In the spiritual arm of the shield is faith. This faith in Christ is unshakable. Fight, Christ covers our back. He fights our battles for us. When we call on the name Jesus, when we call on the, the chief, the chief captain of our salvation, he fights our battle for us. The Bible says in Psalm 3, verse 3, but you, O oh Lord, are my shield for me. You are my shield for me. You cover me day and night. No matter where I go, no matter what angle he comes from, you are my shield. Can't nobody cover me like Jesus. He got my back. He got your back. And that's the point of this shield. That's why Paul says, above all, taking the shield of faith so many people are doubting their faith now. We're questioning God. Particularly our young adults and young people, millennials, they're moving away, they're questioning God. This with the new humanism and all this other stuff coming down the pike. But as I've said, and I'll say it again, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but Holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, hey, the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds are sinking sand. 
We got some great young people, but we got some young and old are now drifting away because you kept your eyes on man. But the Bible says, look unto Jesus, who is the author, hey, and finish your hey. Woo! Of our faith. What God starts, he finishes. And what we've been saying every night, well, my soul is happy now. What we've been saying every night, we've talked about from the beginning to now. Don't drop your weapon because the enemy smiled. Don't drop your weapon because the enemy smiled. Don't let down your guard because the enemy smiled at you. This means war. We are in a battle. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Notice it says evil day. It says evil singular because there's going to be a final conflict. But every day is evil, but then there's going to come that final, that one final conflict. And brothers and sisters, if you don't have on the armor, you're not going to be able to stand. This world is wrapping up. Jesus is about to come. Time is winding up. And we've got to be ready. Not be ready, we've got to stay ready. Notice I said it's time to suit up. No, you need to put it on now. Keep it on 24-7. Sleep with it. Walk with it. Eat with it. Work with it. Keep on this armor because the devil is trying to kill us. But greater is he hey, that is in us than he that is in the world. Do not drop your weapon because the enemy smiled. We've heard from Sister Myers already. And Brother Myers is going to come and sing for us and lead us into a song. And then I'm going to offer prayer. And we're going to shut it down for tonight. But you got to make sure. Somebody's got your back. You got to make sure somebody's got your back. It's a lonely world to be in and nobody is covering you. No one's got your back. Come on, Brother Myers. Let the Lord use you. Hey! We'd like to thank Dr. Thornton for inviting us James Ford, thanks, sir. And to the young people, Dr. Thornton addressed. This song is a hymn called uh, He Looked Beyond My Fault. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. What a message. Amazing grace. Shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked, he looked, he looked beyond my fault and saw all my need amazing grace shall always be my 
my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I do not know just why Christ came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Thank you, Jesus. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary. Oh, yes. To view the cross where Jesus died for. his name. Oh, bless his name. What a fitting song to end on tonight. He looked beyond our faults and met us at the point of our need. Brother Myers, you sang that song. I thought I saw Johnny Mathis up in here tonight. He sang that song. Praise God for you. Well, beloved, we're going to pray now. We're going to wrap it up tomorrow. The subject will be entitled, For Such a Time as This. We're going to end with the helmet, the sword of the spirit, and the mouthpiece of prayer. We're going to wrap it up tomorrow. For such a time as this, we must put on the whole armor of God. Father God, we thank you tonight. Our hearts have been stirred up. We couldn't ask for anything better tonight. You exceeded our expectations. In the music, preach word we try to do our best but we felt your presence here with us tonight we heard the fluttering of angels wings <laughs> we thank you for these this beautiful couple continue to bless their ministry Continue to give them the voices, the music in their soul to uplift the name Jesus. Be with our musical pianist, be with Jimmy. Thank you, Lord, for him. And, 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 and you don't give up on us. <laughs> he, I told him over and over again, he's gifted. And the devil want to do nothing but snatch him. Be with brother Isaac. Bless him and Jimmy and their families. 
they've, they, they've given themselves this week to this revival. And I pray that you bless both of them and their families. Now give us a rest for tonight and bring us back on tomorrow morning when the subject will be entitled For Such a Time as This. As we wrap up the last three pieces of this armament, keep us for we cannot keep ourselves. Save us for we cannot save ourselves. Protect us because we cannot protect ourselves. Deliver us because we cannot deliver ourselves. And when you shall come in the clouds of glory, when you shall crack the sky, may all of us here under the sound of my voice tonight be able to say that it is well with our souls. We ask it all in the name of him who's the captain of our warfare. We make sure we stay on this blood-stained banner of Jesus. Now bless us and keep us. For we ask it all in the worthy name of Jesus. And every child of God say amen. 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 Remember on tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we will meet right here again with the final word for this revival, Spring Revival 2021. For such a time as this, and then as we always end on, don't drop your weapon because the enemy smiles. Because what Isaac has been trying to show you and tell you every night in the song we play, this means war.